Hello, so I thought I'd make a quick video that's hopefully going to help students overcome uh, perhaps what we found to be the biggest hurdle uh, in getting access to their school online resources and that is using a shared device with multiple users who are all using their own Microsoft accounts. Um, all our school accounts are linked with Microsoft so that uh, students can access uh, 365 resources such as Microsoft Teams, SharePoint uh, and obviously their email. Um, but obviously lots of other uh, organizations use Microsoft accounts. Um, it may be that um, two siblings are trying to share the same device um, to do the homework, or it's possible that you're um, using a work device uh, that um, the parents have, uh, have obviously linked to their work account. Uh, either way, um, if you try and log in as two users at the same time, uh, you're gonna come across problems. Uh, an example of that is on the screen in front of you. Um, you can see I'm trying to log into Microsoft Teams here and uh, straight away it's telling me that this user doesn't exist in Marple Hall School so we're not going to allow you into uh, this specific team. Um, the rest of the error message isn't that helpful however we can see here that the email address being used is not a Marple Hall account. Uh, we can tell that because all our addresses end at marplehall.stockport.ac.uk. So that's the big clue that it's picked the wrong account. Um, if we go, um, here's another example. Um, you can see, uh, I'm trying to log into SharePoint. Uh, the error message here is slightly more uh, helpful. Uh, it's more obvious that we're using the wrong account and it even gives us a cute couple of different uh, potential solutions. Um, I shall come back to those in a moment. Uh, the easiest way of resolving this, however, is to set up separate user accounts on the PC for each user that's going to use the device. Um, so you can do this on Mac or PC. Um, it's a very similar process. On a PC, if we go into the settings app, then I can go into the accounts section and click other users and then from there I can add someone else to this PC and what that's going to do is open me up a separate window and within there if I right click on users then one of the options is add a new user and I can just fill out those details um, and create as many users as I like for each member of the family. Um, so um, that's the advantages. Unfortunately, this method um, does make uh, obviously logging onto the PC or uh, Mac a little bit more complicated because when the device boots up, it's going to ask you who you want to log on as and you're going to have to enter that password. And it's also going to make sharing files a little more complicated between users. If you're used to sharing files uh, with other people who use your device, that's going to be a little bit more complicated. Um, but I think that's a small price to pay to get your Microsoft accounts behaving properly. Um, so um, that's one option. Um, if you don't want to go down that road, though, um, the next simplest option is just simply to use a different browser. So I've got Google Chrome installed on this device. And if I try to go to teams.microsoft.com, um, what's going to happen is that it's ignoring the sign in that I'm using here and it's asking me to sign in. Uh, and because I'm not signed in, I can either sign into a user I've used before or I can click other account and then it's going to allow me to put in my email address, uh, click next and then enter my password and then hopefully log me in successfully. So um, you can imagine a situation where uh, two siblings are sharing a device and one of them uses say Microsoft Edge and the other uses Google Chrome um, and um, as long as they stick to um, only using that browser each then um, that should work quite well. Uh, the only downside to that is obviously one of those browsers is probably going to be the default on the device and if a, uh, a, a user clicks uh, a hyperlink then that's going to open in the default browser so you may find uh, that it um, doesn't open in the browser that you're sort of you've been assigned um, but as long as you're careful uh, that does work fairly well um, the next option is to use something called private browsing um, so if I go ahead and log in as this user 
but then I decide that I need to log in as someone else at the same time uh, and I don't want to use a different browser what I can do is while I'm logged in I can open a new incognito window now um, in Google they call it incognito but um, the, there's a general term for it is private browsing and that's how most browsers refer to it but if I click new incognito window um, you can see straight away that um, I've opened a private browsing window it even tells you um, and what this does is it creates a, a, a separate session that is very distinct from uh, my original um, normal browsing session and it's going to allow me to um, basically sign into a Microsoft account and it's going to ignore any other accounts I've used in my normal session. Uh, there's only one gotcha with this especially on Chrome is that um, to make their private browsing ultra private they block third-party cookies and unfortunately that stops the Microsoft sign-in process from working so if you're using Google Chrome you're going to need to allow third-party cookies. Um, so if I then go to teams.microsoft.com again, that's now going to ask me to sign in. Um, whereas you can see that I'm still signed in here. If I continue, I'm signed into Teams. Yet here in my private browsing session, I could sign into a different Microsoft account and still access Teams and be logged in at the same time. So that's one uh, another way of fixing it. Um, the downside of this is the moment I close that private browsing session, it completely forgets about it. So the next time I want to log in as that user, I'd have to open a separate browsing session again. So it's every time I want to use it, I'd have to make sure that I open a private browsing session. Um, again, it's a bit faffy, but uh, it does work really well. Okay, um, the other option um, is to make sure I log out of all my Microsoft accounts before the next user uh, uses the PC. Um, again, this is nice and simple, but it might not be practical um, uh, with the way you're using the device. But in order to do that, um, it's fairly simple. Uh, all I need to do is select my um, Microsoft account and hit sign out and what that's going to do is sign me out of all my um, Microsoft accounts if we go back to that SharePoint error that was actually one of the options that it gave me uh, so it'd be really useful if it gave this more often because I think this actually would fix a lot of people's problems if I click that then basically it just goes through that logout process as well um, so now I've done all of that um, I should be logged out of all my Microsoft accounts um, so if I try and log in again it's going to give me this op um, option of using a different account uh, it'll still remember that I've logged into this one previously um, so it's still available however I could sign in with a different account now um, and then if you logged out every time you swapped who was using the PC, then um, you could then choose which account uh, you uh, you want to use. Um, so that's hopefully everything you need to know, um, apart from one thing. Um, slightly more complicatedly, um, Microsoft encourage you to link a Microsoft account to the user account of the device that you're using. So you may find that you log out exactly as we have just done now yet it still doesn't offer you the choice of using another account um, and I've only found this to happen when you have got a linked Microsoft account um, so the way to find this is to go back into that settings app that we used to create our new user um, and again if we go back into accounts uh, if I go to this access work or school section that is where those linked accounts will show up so we can see that I have got a uh, an account already linked in here. Uh, if I select that, then it gives me the option to disconnect it. Um, now, again, depending on this is a work device, this might not um, even be possible. Sometimes they'll um, sort of lock your uh, device down to prevent you doing this. Uh, but if it's available, then unlinking your account is definitely going to um, 
ensure that it uh, doesn't get used when trying to log into Microsoft services. Um, so that's it. So we've now got no um, user account links. Um, conversely, of course, this can be really helpful if you've gone through the process of setting up separate user accounts on the device. Um, then actually, you perhaps do want these uh, linked to um, to the user account, so that next time you log into the device, it automatically gives you access to the resources uh, made available through your Microsoft account, or in, in uh, this case, the school account. Um, so we can click the connect button, and that will basically take us through a Microsoft sign-in process where we can um, we can log in with uh, with our school email uh, address. And password, and that would uh, that would then link that to the to the user account, of the PC, making it easier to access in future. Um, right. Well, I'm sure that is everything you need to know. Obviously, if you're still having problems accessing uh, your school resources, um, and you think it's down to some sort of interaction between various Microsoft accounts, please do get in touch. Uh, as usual, it's network.support at marplehall.stock sch.uk and hopefully we will be able to talk you through fixing it okay hope that's been useful